in this problem, we are asked to analyze uh, the potential step with incoming particles from the left having energy less than the height of the potential barrier. We are asked to figure out, we are asked to write down the wave functions in each region and use the boundary conditions to find the equations that relate the undetermined amplitude parameters to each other. So uh, let's start by the, the region to the left of the boundary when x is less than zero. Here we have the wave function and it will have an incoming piece denoted by e to the ik zero x, which represents a right moving wave with wave number k zero. And it might have some reflection from the boundary which will be represented by e to the minus i k zero x, which is for a left moving wave. A and B are undetermined amplitude coefficients, and k zero, and there is no potential energy, is given by square root of two m e over h bar squared. In region one where x is between x0 and l, we can still do the same thing. Psi1 of x is, now let's name this coefficient c. In this case, because e is less than u0, there's not really uh, traveling waves, but it's more like exponential decays and increases. And in that case, we just simply write e to the k1x plus d to the e minus k1x, where k1 is equal to, to um, u0 minus e divided by h bar squared. Uh, for the final region, where x is larger than l, let's, let's call that psi 2 of x. Again, we have to write down some arbitrary coefficients. Let's call it f. Now this one is representing a wave that is traveling to the right, and g e to the minus i k two of x, and this one is representing a wave traveling to the left, and k two is going to actually be equal to k zero because the energy is the same and there's the potential here. So this again is equal to two m e over h bar squared. Now these are our wave functions, psi zero for when x is less than zero in this region, psi one in the potential barrier, and psi two in the right region. Now, whenever there is a boundary that the wave function has two pieces on each side, we have to use continuity equations to relate the coefficients to one another, and continuity equations are basically uh, for x equals zero, for the boundary at x equals zero. These relations are that the wave function's value on both sides have to be equal to one another, and the derivative of the wave function evaluated at the boundary have to be equal to each other on both sides as well. Now, this one will tell us that a e to the zero plus b e to the zero um, i k zero zero i k zero zero is equal to c e to the k one zero plus d that is a minus here sorry e to the minus k one zero thus this will tell us a plus b equals c plus d now let's call this derivative expression expression b and evaluate that uh, the derivative of psi zero with respect to x is simply equal to i k zero a e to the 
IK0X minus IK0 B e to the minus IK0X. And if we evaluate this at X equals zero, we will get rid of the exponentials. So this would simply be equal to IK zero A minus B. The derivative of psi one respect to X is equal to K one C e to the K one X minus K one D e to the minus K one X. And again, if we evaluate this at x equals zero, the exponential will become one because e to the zero is one. So we will get rid of the exponentials and this will be equal to k1 c minus d. So the first boundary, x equals zero, gives us these two equations, a plus b, equals c plus d and i k zero a minus b equals k one c minus d. Now let's look at the second boundary, which is at x equals l. At x equals l, we still have the same type of conditions. The wave function's value on both sides have to be equal to one another. Psi 1 is the wave function in this region, and psi 2 is the wave function in this region, and they, they share the boundary x equals L. And like the one at x equals 0, the derivative of psi 1 respect to x evaluated at x equals L have to be equal to the derivative of psi 2 with respect to x evaluated at x equals l. The first condition will tell us c e to the k1 l plus d e to the minus k1 l has to be equal to f e to the i k0 l plus g e to the minus i k zero l. Uh, let's call this equation c, the derivative expression. Uh, c <coughs> will give us, again taking the derivative, is equal to k1 c e to the k1 x minus k1 d e to the minus k1 x. The derivative of psi 2 with respect to x is equal to i k 0. I'm going to write this in a shorter way. f e to the i k 0 x minus g e to the minus i k 0 x. Where all I did was I collected the coefficient my ik0 out front. If we evaluate this at x equals 0, we will get, and when evaluate at x equals l, both, both have to be equal to one another. If we evaluate this at x equals l, we will get k1c overall k1 e to the k1l minus d e to the minus k1l. Now this has to be equal to the derivative of psi 2 to respect to x evaluated at x equals l, and we can write that as i k 0 overall f e to the i k 0 l minus g e to the minus i k 0 l. Now the problem does not ask us to solve these equations, but it asks us in the last part which of these unknown parameters a, b, c, d, f, g should be set to zero if the particles are coming from the left. Now, if you look at this diagram, um, the particles are coming from the left and a represents the amplitude of the particles coming from the left. 
towards the boundary. B is the one that is reflected. C and D are the ones inside the barrier. F represents particles traveling after they have tunneled to the barrier. And G represents particles that are coming from the right. But in our case, there are no particles coming from the right because once they are transmitted, they will just move towards infinity because there is not a barrier. So basically, this tells us that G have to be zero.